Hey guys, I'm Brandon with PotionForm. Today we'll be looking at the Enscape 3D tabs. I will be using SketchUp as the base program, but these functions are the same in Revit and Rhino. When I first started using Enscape, I found that changing settings again and again was a natural part of the perfecting of views. However, it can get pretty random and time consuming if you're changing one element at a time. So I invested my time in understanding the way Enscape is set up, using tabs focused at one visual element at a time. Inkscape's tabs help you customize and perfect the look for your real-time views, renders, and videos. And it's important to get the right settings down for each tab, so you can organize a workflow throughout each project. In this video, I go through each of the tabs and how you can customize the look to fit your model. Stay tuned to the end where I share some productivity tips to get the best workflow. These are the visual settings tab in your Inkscape. You can see the custom preset is the main one. If we click on this arrow right here, we see where we can save or edit presets. Presets come in five different tabs. You can develop the type of uh, main style settings. You can change the image settings. You can change the atmosphere settings for the sky and such. Um, and you also have a sky tab, which is actually a little more detailed version of sky effects. And then you can choose the output. And the output is where we start to develop the lines on the side or how you want the image to go. And then we have different options. So let's talk about these as we are looking at the model. So in the main style, you can choose whether you are going to show the model in its natural colors or you're just going to show everything is white. So now you see everything is white. That's your white setting. You can choose polystyro, which is a little different, little different reflections. You also can choose light view, where it just shows how much light is on something. We go back to looking at it as the regular model. You also can choose the type of camera settings from here. So you can, this is important because you can save it with a preset if you want to have different settings. You can also choose to have auto exposure, where you can go um, where you change the exposure by where you are, or you can choose regular manual exposure. So manual exposure means how much light comes into your camera. If it's manual, then if you're in a dark space or a light space, as we go inside of here, it will stay the same. But if you do auto exposure, you will see that the exposure changes based on where you're located. If we increase this up a little bit, we can actually go outside and it's not too high. We go inside and it's pretty bright. Also, we can choose the depth of field. So we zoom out, we can start to look at that effect. Depth of field, and we can um, move the window a little bit out of this, the view, is where we're seeing how wide the camera can look out. So, depth of field is something that is going to change essentially how clear something is in relationship to the camera. So, if something is very close, it'll be sharp. If something is far away, it'll be blurry. So, we'll set that back to zero. And you also see how autofocus is naturally selected. We can change the quality of the render down here by choosing either a low draft quality. And if you notice, things will go a lot faster when you're moving. There's not as much realism. But you can also go from medium to high. And it takes a loading for each, each of those settings. We're going to keep this as the image tab. The image tab has ways that we can affect that final image. We've already set up which style it's going to be in. Now we can start to change a couple of the things about it. We can change the highlights to be very bright, or we can make them lower. Shadows can be higher or lower. We can change it to be zero saturated, which is pretty much take out all the colors, or we can make it more saturated and add more color. Let's go back to that 100. And if we ever want to set it back to original, we can just click that return setting right there. We also can change the color temperature. We can make it warmer 
or we can make it colder and we can reset it there. Motion blur happens if you're making a video and also when you're moving it will have a motion blur to it. Then you can choose what type of lens flare. Lens flare has to do with if the sun is on the other side of your image, for instance. So we change the time. The more the lens flare, the more it comes out. You also can choose a bloom effect, which makes the outer edge or the light just glow a little bit. And vignetting is where our edges of our image appear black. We also can um, work on chrom chromatic aberration. And each of these gives you an idea of what the setting does, with the little pop-up description. You also can use auto contrast to put into your image. The atmosphere tab goes into how you want various elements like illumination, wind, and fog. You can increase the amount of fog, which thankfully blurs out some of the image background. If, in case your model hasn't modeled it, you can see the background is just a gray. You also can make it high or low in terms of that fog. You also can make the sun to be brighter, which exposes the image, sort of dreamy look. Or you can lower it. You also, if you're in the night sky, if we do shift and change it to night, we can make that night sky much brighter or lower. And we can come back into the day. Uh, we also can choose how sharp we want the shadows. So for instance, if I change the time of day, the shadows are on this side, we can make those shadows sharp or we can make them very fuzzy. And we get to choose, um, this is more for light at evening. Um, it depends on how your lights are set up. You can make, you see the car lights, you can make it very bright, or you can make it very uh, dark. So you can see these are not very strong lights set up. We'll talk about that shortly. We'll go back into the day. We also can choose the ambient brightness. So that can make things a lot brighter in your image. So if something is in the dark, it will change if it's super dark. And one thing for wind intensity, that affects how the trees will naturally move. And that's an animation part of landscape. You can have a lot of wind and your trees are moving a lot when you move, or you can have a zero. And also you can choose the angle at which they're moving. The sky tab looks at what your background could be. Also, you're looking into the clouds. Right now, we have um, pretty much a, a basic sky and a bit of a gray background. But if we choose white, pretty much everything will be white at the back. Uh, we also can choose white ground or a clear sky. We also can have a background to desert. You can see if we want to have a desert setting. We also can choose to have a forest and trees behind us, or we can have mountains. And we have a couple different settings for the architecture. You have it cubes or an urban setting. You have little buildings behind you. Now for the site, we also can make sure that horizon is rotated so if we don't like where the buildings are. We also can make custom um, sky boxes that are downloaded and downloadable here if you have made one. You can also download sky boxes online or if you're familiar it's similar process to making panoramas. Uh, we also can affect the size of the moon so if we go out in the night if it's bigger or smaller. Now let's look up to the sky for cloud settings. So we can actually have a lot of clouds like a rainy day or very few we can change the variety. We also can deal with the cirrus amount. So you see those cirrus clouds or the contrails. So we can see like a trail like this. We can um, take out that contrail. That's right there. We also can change different items like the longitude or the latitude of the clouds. Output settings help us see how the image would be when we take it out of Enscape. 
So these are, by the general, set to full HD, but you also can set it to the size of the window. And remember, I have the safety bars on, or safe bars. You also can set it just to 1024 by 768. You can set it to full HD. You also can set it to ultra HD. So be mindful that the larger it is, the more it's going to um, take in time when you render it. We're going to go back to full HD. We also can export things like the ob object ID and material ID right here. And we have issues and choices for how you'll export it in your formats. You also can choose which folder to go to. Um, and you also can choose if you want automatic naming or if you can change the name. The export option for video are also down here. You can choose the frame rate or the compression quality. Panorama settings are also down here. The Inkscape tabs are super helpful for perfecting a view or your model, but here are some productivity tips that ensure the best productivity through your Inkscape working. Number one, you want to set up visual settings for your presets at the beginning. This means perfecting the view early so you can link presets to views and render your views at the end. You can update these presets, but linking them to the view increases your speed. Number two, link custom presets to views. That means night shots, day shots, and tier shots that will help you perfect a particular setting that will be set up for that view. Next, you want to export your presets pretty regularly. And if your program crashes, you can always have that. And you can go back to the same preset when you're going in the future and you want to get that specific look and you take it to new projects. Thanks for joining me. This has been Brandon with Motionform. Comment if you have any questions and check my links if you need help with Revit. I love to help you master your Revit skills. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to the Motionform channel for more helpful tutorials and unique content for architects and designers.